So to continue the discussion about the ingredient in here, the I'll just spell it right here because I don't think I can pronounce it. Okay. The ingredient itself. I did some research and I went to a website um, called RealSelf.com, and you should see it as well. I'm actually going to pull it up also on my cell phone because my printer um, is something's wrong with it. I jammed it up a couple days ago, so it's not printing. I also wrote down the information. I just want to read a little bit of information to you about this, about the ingredient. Sodium alpha olefin sulfonate, and there are several different versions. The one that's in here is the C14 through 16. It's what's in this um, shampoo. Okay? So it's our mixtures of long chain sulfonate salts prepared by the sulfonation of alpha olefins. The numbers indicate the average length of chain of the carbon chains of the alpha olefins. Okay, it says in cosmetic products, in personal care products, sodium alpha olefin sulfonates. I'm just going to abbreviate it as SAOS just for future references for the rest of this video. I use mainly in shampoos, bath, and shower products. The FDA reviewed the safety of the A of the SAOS and approved the use of ammonium, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium salts of these ingredients as indirective, indirect food additives, as components of adhesives, and as emulsifiers or as surface acting agents. So I'm assuming what's being used for in here is the latter part, as an emulsifier and as a surface active agent. I have seen, um, when doing research on other ingredients, I do see lots of products are used as emulsifiers sometimes in um, cleansing products and for products where conditioning is supposed to be the main purpose. So I just have seen that before. Uh, this is the part I also want to share, which made me understand why my eye was irritated. Says the panel noted that sodium, the SAOS, are poorly absorbed through normal skin, but are significantly absorbed through damaged skin. It's kind of interesting. Okay, this is the part that reminds me. Short-term toxic toxicity studies showed no consistent effects even with exposures, oh wait, sorry, I haven't got there yet. Concentrations above 10% produced moderate ocular irritation, and a concentration of 5% produced a mild ocular irritation. So I was able to understand why my eyes were burning so badly after I read that piece right there. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll. I wish I had my paper. Uh, okay, here's another piece of information. SAOS are otherwise considered safe for use in rinsed off products. Based on concerns about irritation, the use of SAOS in leave-in products was limited to 2%. So, the reason for my eye irritation is that particular ingredient, um, which kind of makes it really difficult for me because I like the way it worked when I did my, uh, my puffy, uh, my bang, and I like the way it cleansed my hair, but I did not like the eye irritation. It was very bad for me, and usually, usually I can withhold different things. I'm usually not that sensitive. Um, with the organic slime, I don't really experience eye irritation like that. Um, I don't know what to tell, but I'm going to have to think about it. I mean, I do like the results, so maybe, um, maybe I i going to have to find another method to wash my hair to reduce the eye irritation, but to me, it, it really burned my eyes, um, to say the least. I didn't even finish washing my hair, and usually I always come in a shower. Usually if I start in the shower washing and conditioning my hair, that's usually, I'm in the shower for the whole time. This time I actually have to step out, so I'm going to have to think about that, but I will say I do like the way it works. Um, I don't know how your eyes are going to react to the product, but... As for me, I'm going to think about it, or at least I'm not going to use it as often. But as for the not today, I'm definitely going to purchase this again. And actually, I'm going to be heading to um, an event this coming weekend in Charlotte. So if there are any not today products, I may just purchase them. Also, the other piece of advice I'm going to give, um, the next thing is about using quality bobby pins and hair pins. I called myself getting a deal when I went to a small beauty supply store and I saw 
uh, like a tub of hairpins. I should have brought the container in here. I was like, oh wow, that's pretty good. It's like, you know, 300 hairpins for only $3. Um, no. I think it was one I think it was one ninety nine. Three hundred hairpins for two bucks. So I was like, sweet, you know, I'm thinking like, wow, that's a deal. So I purchased these hairpins and I think I may have thrown all of them away. Because when I wore my hair in those twists, um God, I really had one out. When I wore my hair in those twists, it worked okay as far as the hold goes. But I noticed I had black um pieces of leftover residue from the the hairpin. This is a good quality hairpin. This is not the hair this is not the pen I'm talking about. It was a regular hairpin. Um, and the quality of the finish of the paint on there, horrible. When I put it in my hair, after I took it out, it was like shards of black stuff that were coming off on my hands and it was all through my hair. And as I was washing that's another reason why I was in the shower trying to really wash my hair thoroughly because I had all those black pieces of shards in my hair when I was using those hair pins. And I had my twist up for two weeks and then I had my hair in a twist out for almost another week. So for almost three weeks I had those ugly, nasty looking black pieces of finish on in my hair because of the hair pin. So from now on, I may be tempted, but I'm not going to be tempted anymore to purchase cheap hairpins. I'm just going to can stick with the Goody brand. It's really good. I can usually find, um, I think, 60 count of Goody hairpins at like Walmart for like 96 cents. So it's less than a buck for 60. So I am totally content with paying, you know, a dollar for 60 hairpins as opposed to paying two dollars for 300 hairpins that are just going to pretty much come apart. That's gross. It's disgusting. And also, ladies, spend another dollar or more to buy the amount of hairpins you would have liked to, you're definitely going to come out better in the long run. Last piece of advice before I go is uh, our hair. I experienced several types of fairy knots in my hair because I noticed when I was eating them, ladies, stop twirling your hair like this. I noticed I was twirling my hair like this a lot. Um, when I had my hair in my twist out, and as I was playing with my hair, I was like, oh my gosh, my hair got caught. I'm looking at it in the mirror. I created a fairy knot by twirling the ends of my hair. And I noticed several different fairy knots on that same side of the head because I'm right-handed, and when I get bored, I, I, really, I was twirling my hair around. So piece, another piece of advice, stop playing with your hair. You're going to do your hair much, much, much needed love and affection by just keeping your hands out after you've already styled it. So try to be more cognizant of what you're doing with your hands when you're not styling your hair. So I hope my videos have been um, helpful to you in some way or another. I just want to pop in here to talk to you a little bit about my experience with using the Kinky Curly um, cleansing and detangling products as well as providing you with some information about that. And um, please, ladies, let's stop playing with our hair so we will not create fairy knots in our hair. So thanks again for watching, and come back, and please comment. I love reading them. Bye.